So hi, everybody. So today we're gonna to talk about MySQL indexes and histograms and how we can speed up uh, the queries. Right. Let's start by presenting a bit uh, myself. Uh, so who I am. So my name is Frédéric Descamps. And as you can hear, I am uh, speaking the most uh, popular language in the world, which is bad English. So if there is something you don't understand, uh, yeah, just, uh, you will have the slide later, read the slide or just ask me uh, after I, and I will try to, uh, uh, to make it more clear. But usually my French accent, it's easy to, to understand. So uh, my name, so it's Frédéric Descamps. I have a Twitter, which is Lefred, and this is also the nickname that everybody knows me from IRC uh, and uh, Slack everywhere. It's uh, Lefred in the MySQL community. So I'm MySQL evangelist. I am using MySQL since a lot of time. My first version, I remember, was 3.21. I am a DevOps believer. So if you have a question related to that, uh, we can, I can answer it later too. Uh, I like basketball. I'm living in Belgium. And I have a blog where I'll, you can find a lot of information related to uh, MySQL, but not only, which is lefred.bb. So what is this session about? So this session, it's about speed and performance because nobody ever complains that the database is too fast. Usually it's uh, the reverse, right? And they blame the database, even if it is not the database uh, default, but this is how it works in the reality. And the speeding up queries, it's not really a dark art, but understanding how uh, to speed up those queries uh, sometimes can uh, be compared to magic, right? But we will see that uh, it's not always the case, but there is some uh, thing that you need to know to, to be able to do that, right? So we will be looking uh, how to, uh, what is an index, how to properly use an index, what's an histogram or to use it and keep the right balance for your workload. Of course, this is a dry subject. There is a lot, uh, a lot of content in my slides. So do not try to absorb everything I'm saying right now. Some slides I will even go very uh, fast, um, uh, review them very quickly with you, uh, because uh, like I said, we have a lot. But so today don't try to absorb everything, but later you will get the slides and please check them uh, and uh, read them. You will uh, find uh, and some stuff will uh, be much easier to, uh, to check when you see them for a second time. So what I won't cover today, but I can ask, if you have a question, I can answer them too also later. It's about system configuration. So related to OS or MySQL, the hardware and networking in cloud. So this won't be a part of this, um, this session. So query response time, the North Star. So here I will quote um, Daniel Nichter. So query response time is the only metric anyone truly cares about because the query response time is the only metric we experience, right? When there is a query that takes 7.5 seconds to execute, we experience 7.5 seconds of impatience. And that same query might examine a million of rows, but we don't experience that million of rows, of course. It's just the time because our time is precious. So this, is, uh, this comes from uh, efficient MySQL performance, best practices and techniques from Daniel Nectar. I recommend you this book, but I will recommend you uh, other books during the session. So, and this is so true what Daniel says here, because as a user, this is the response time that, is, that matters, right? So today uh, on this uh, session, the goal is to reduce the, re the query response time. First thing, when we have a, a very large um, query response time, and if people blame the, the database and you are sure that the database is the, it's the problem, right? We need to find the ugly duckling. So what are bad queries? So we can define bad queries in two different categories. So the queries that are called way too often, for example, if you have one query uh, that is called 15,000 times to just display one, page, one web page, this is way too much, right? But also the, the other queries are the queries that are way too slow, even if it's one query, but that same query takes 
I don't know, one minute, and you, you, every time uh, you call it one minute to wait for it, then it's way too long. And these tables that are way too slow, usually what they do, they do full table scan, they use file sort, so they use uh, sorting the result using a, a file, or they use temporary table, right? So this is just for the fun. Most of the time, full table scan, it's what uh, scares uh, MySQL DBAs. So if there, is, if there could be only one query, right, uh, and uh, to optimize, and only one that uh, you, you have uh, uh, to fix, right, this query, the best candidate will, will be the query that consumes the most of the execution time. And that execution time is the latency in the performance schema table that are uh, also available in MySQL, right? So NC schema also contain all the necessary data uh, that we need to, uh, to parse to find that uh, bad query, right? So this is, for example, the query that you should execute to find the query you have in your system that consumes the most response time. This will be the first candidate of query optimization. So if we run that query on this system, uh, or one system I, I was using for a conference uh, several uh, days ago. So we can see that this query was called uh, only five times, but the total latency was four hour, 29 minutes, right? So with an average of 51 minutes uh, per call. So this is the query I should optimize somehow, right? So the query previously provide you this information. As you can see here, we were looking information in performance schema uh, to get that information and in C schema. So C schema also contains uh, all um, required information to find uh, very bad queries, like the, all the statements that do uh, full table scans, all the statements that are taking most of the time or the, the statement that do uh, sorting and using temp tables. So you can find all these statements in uh, performance NC schema in MySQL. And since MySQL 8.0, we can also join uh, with another table called performance schema event statement summary by digest to have exactly a sample of, uh, um, of the query that you can use because all the queries are in a form that are, it's, it's a digest that you can use and that, uh, you know, they, they remove all the parameters and stuff. But if you want to have uh, an example, you have it in MySQL 8. It's possible to have that. So we will check the meaning of all that in the, in the, um, in the other slide, be patient. So first, one of the component of MySQL that is very important when we talk about queries is the optimizer, right? So the MySQL optimizer, it's considered as the, uh, the brain and the system nervous of MySQL. So this is, every time we do a query, this is the, the component that decides what to do, right? So query optimization, it's of course part of many uh, our DBMS, right? And in there also part of MySQL. So the query optimizer will attempt to always uh, determine the most effective way to execute one query and considering all the possible query plans we have. We're gonna see later what does that mean uh, in a few slides again. So, and this is the hardest problem in the query optimization, it's to uh, accurately estimate the cost and all the, of all the, the possible plans. If you have one simple query, there may be only one plan, but if you have multi tables, multi uh, uh, field columns in the work condition, this, you may have a lot of different plan that the optimizer needs to, uh, to estimate to find the best one, right? And of course, the cost of this is are some uh, mathematical models, right? To, to find that query execution and uh, to make all estimation, because of course you don't execute the query, uh, the optimizer won't execute all the, the, um, uh, the query he will, or all the plans he is trying to find the best one. It's all done by estimation, right? We're gonna see that uh, in, in a few slides again, right? 
of course, the, the, the goal of the optimizer is to get the data the cheapest way possible, right? And uh, like, uh, uh, it's exactly like a root planner, right? Uh, you will have, um, when you, you are in a root planner, we call it in Europe GPS, right? Uh, the cost, it's built on historical data, right? And this statistic can change why the optimizer is working. So like there is a traffic jam, you, you have the road, there is a new traffic jam. Oh, watch out. It's maybe too late to change road. So you have to go in that traffic jam, which means that you have made a poor decision and the optimizer also can make poor decision. But of course, this is very, very rare, right? So. Uh, don't worry that much about that, but it, it, it could happen, right? And this is why you, we need to check that. And we're going to see how we can check that, right? And so the, the final determination of the optimizer, it's called the query execution plan for the query, or what I call it also QEP or the query plan. And of course, this is something, if you are an Oracle DBA, you, know, you must know that MySQL wants to optimize each time he sees a query. There is no something that uh, uh, where you can lock down the query plan like in Oracle, for example. So if you have uh, a query that has five joints, for example, the optimizer may have to evaluate 120 different options, five factor, right? To find all the plans to uh, get uh, the, the best one uh, to execute the query, right? So, now we know what the optimizer is doing, and we need we know that at the end when he, he checks all the query, it it wants to find you the best query execution plan. And the query execution plan we can also as a MySQL DBA check it and explain it's our uh, best companion for that. So explain is the command that we're going to use as a DBA to obtain the query execution plan for a query including information about how the tables are joined, uh, in which order, which indexes are used, and the estimation, of course, that the optimizer do. So here uh, on, the, on the right, you can see the help of uh, the explain uh, command, right? So let's run uh, an explain on a query, right? A qu this is a simple query. It is a select star from city where country code e equal GBR. And this is what this is the query itself. Then we have the query plan. So we can see here the query plan and some extended uh, information next to it. So for this query, what we can see, we can see that uh, there is no partition, there is one table which is city, there is some indexes, uh, there is only one indexes that uh, we can use, which is country code, and we are using country code. And we're going to return 81 uh, rows for it. This is the query plan. But like I said, this is an estimation on how MySQL would run the query because the query is not executed, right? So this is just how the optimizer would run the query. And as you can see here, the access um, uh, type, right, uh, is uh, uh, the ref here. You can see const, for example, right? it means that almost uh, one row match for the table. But let's have a look here of all these access type. So this is a list, for example, of one of the sites I won't uh, go through, through it because like I said, we have a lot, but this is information about all these and, uh, and what it means. The thing as a DBA that we don't want to see, it's on the next slide and here it is uh, our full table scan. So when you see all, it is something you don't want to see, right? This is where the uh, the ghost was doing boo boo and full table scan was ooh, scary. This is exactly where it's scary when you see this all uh, as an access type. If you want to see to have uh, examples of each access type in the chapter twenty of analyzing queries from Jasper, you will uh, find that which is MySQL eight query performance tuning April two thousand and twenty. So this is uh, another book I also um, encourage you to, uh, to check if you are looking for uh, query optimization in MySQL. So now let me show you another uh, explain output with the join. So we can see here we have two uh, rows. 
So we can see that we have the, it starts with the table country. Even if we start it, you see the query, we start the query, we select start from city, join country. The optimizer decided to start with the table country. And he estimated to retrieve 239 rows doing a full table scan. And then it will join the table city and where it also does a full table scan, right? But, and it used a hash join that we have in MySQL 8 to make before it was uh, much more uh, expensive to do that kind of queries. No, it's, uh, it's better, but of course, full table scan are not always recommended. If you are using a MySQL Workbench, you can also have uh, the explain in a visual uh, output format, which is uh, how it looks like. So these are just two examples of um, exp visual explain output. Finally, we have also another format, which is uh, format tree. So if you are a DBA from another database than uh, MySQL, you may be more familiar with this, this output, uh, with the tree output, right? And so when you do explain format tree, you have a tree output like this one. This one was a short one. This one, it's a, a bit bigger and I will show you a, even a longer one uh, after. So this is how the output uh, is, which it's uh, more familiar for some people. And there is one last uh, output, which is the most complete one, which is the JSON uh, format. So when you do explain format JSON, you will have a lot of information about the query and the cost of it. And uh, this is of course, the most detailed estimation you can have. But again, this is again an estimation only, right? So can we know the real numbers? Of course, we can know uh, some of the numbers, like by if we run the query, we will see how long it takes, but we won't have the, the statistics. In MySQL 8, it is possible to use explain analyze. With explain analyze, right, we use the output is the same as explain format tree, but we have the estimated cost exactly was explain format tree, but we also have the actual executions and statistics. So we will have the time to return the first row, the time to return all the row, the number of row return and the number of loops. So these are not estimate anymore. These are the actual time. And we can see we have the estimation and then the actual time next to it, right? So this instrument, but also executes the query. So watch out, don't run explain analyze on a very, very uh, large query that you expect to take hours because you will have to, if you have to run it twice, uh, one to analyze and then to run it, uh, you will run it uh, two times and this may take a lot of time, right? So with explain analyze, this is an example, a bigger example uh, um, of the output. You can see here is the actual time to get the first row. So the first row, uh, we, it took seven milliseconds, a bit more to get it. Then here, the actual time to have all the rows. So it's um, 567 um, milliseconds. How many rows were read? So a bit more than 4,000 once, right? So this is how it works to get the information. So we run the query, but we also get all the instrumentation and statistics uh, of it. So these are not any estimates anymore as we can compare the estimate with the actual numbers. So if you're very interested in the explain, the MySQL uh, manual has a lot of information uh, about it uh, too, right? So this is was for us to get the query execution plan to know how to get it and uh, just to uh, understand it a bit, how, how it works, right? So now we go in the indexes part. So find the rows with specific column value more quickly. This is the, the role of the index, right? So a database index is a data structure uh, that improve the speed of the data uh, uh, to uh, retrieve that uh, when we do a retrieval operation, we want to make it faster, we need to use an index, right? Of course, we need to pay a cost for it. And the additional cost is that we need to uh, maintain that index by writing data uh, into it. 
and also write it somewhere, which is the storage that we will consume to do that, right? Uh, like I said, the index are used to quickly locate the data without uh, having to search every uh, time the full table uh, for uh, some data uh, values, right? And uh, indexes, this is important, can be uh, created using one or more columns of a database table and providing a basis for both rapid random lookups and efficient access of ordered the records. So this is exact the definition from Wikipedia. Uh, that you can find here also. In MySQL, we support uh, multiple kind uh, of indexes. So we have primary key that we can see as a clustered index, secondary index, full text index, and special index, right? So when you, on the, on the right here, you see when we create uh, an index, all the parameters and options uh, we can have to create an index. So in MySQL, again, we have two types of index, B-trees index and hash index. And all indexes can have some, I call them properties, which is prefix of a column, multi-column, a unique index, a covering index, functional index, multi-value index. So this is uh, all a uh, type of uh, and properties for indexes that can improve you uh, to find uh, the, and to create the right index. So let's start with the most important uh, in InnoDB, because if you don't know, InnoDB is a storage engine of MySQL by default, and the one you need to use, which is ACID compliant. Uh, if some of you are still using MyExam, you should not, and use uh, InnoDB. So each InnoDB table has a special index, which is called the clustered index, that stores raw uh, data. Typically, the clustered index is the synonym of the primary key, right? So let's check now together an example on how mentally uh, we, represent, we could represent a table uh, and uh, an index usually. So not in ODB, but just how we can see where people think about a table and an index. So we have a table, table one, and an index next to it. So we insert a table, right? So this is, and we can see that the first column is the indexed column. So the, the key is 5001. So in the index, we put 5001. Then we add another column. So this is how we, we think it happened on the, data, on, the, on the table. So three, uh, the new one, and the index gets sorted uh, like this. Then another one, then another one, and then another one. This is all most of the time people represent a table uh, in their mind and that the index is pointing to the right, uh, to the right one, right? In InnoDB, this is not how it works. In InnoDB, this is what we have. So when we insert into table one and the value is uh, 5001 and uh, the, the first column is the primary key, this is how it works. So we have this and that's it. Then, we add another uh, value. So in this case, again, we uh, add the value which has the primary key three. What happened? As you can see, the three on the table itself will become, will be inserted before uh, 5001, meaning that we need to move 5001 somewhere next after it. We enter six, we need to add six after three, and we need to move again 5001. Same for 27. Now we will add 12. What happens? We need to move two rows uh, to be able to insert 12 here, right? So you can see this as a consequence, and we're going to see that uh, in the next uh, slides uh, again, right? So this is the clustered index representation sorted by uh, order of the primary key. So what we know now is that InnoDB stores the data in table space. And so far, we know that uh, the records are stored and sorted using the clustered index. The primary key is the key for, uh, for the index that uniquely defined for a row and should be immutable. InnoDB needs a primary key. No null value are allowed. And this is important, it's monotonically increased. You can see I was using uh, integers and it was increasing. 
And if now you say, oh, but my primary key should be a UUID, you should use UUID to bin to be able to have a sequential one. If not, you should avoid UUIDs. And I will show you why. So what we don't know is that all secondary indexes in MySQL also contains the primary key at the rightmost part of the index. It's hidden, you don't see it, but it's there, even if you don't uh, see it, right? So that means that when a secondary index is used to retrieve a record, Two end indexes uh, lookup are, uh, are done. One in the secondary index to find the primary key of the record you want, and then the, uh, the one in the primary key to get the record. When there is no primary key defined in, in a DB table, what happens? Then the first unique not null key is used. And if there are none available, in a DB, we'll just create a hidden one, a hidden primary key that you don't have at all control of it, which is a six byte long. And the problem with such key, it's that you don't have control and that it is global for all the tables, in a DB tables that don't have a primary key. Meaning that if you insert in multiple tables, even if they are completely independent, you will have a mutex contention issue uh, to find the next number uh, of the primary key, which in MySQL, you can see it as dix sys mutex. So you should avoid uh, um, of not having InnoDB uh, primary key or let InnoDB create it for you. And another reason to have primary key is that for HA solutions, primary key are mandatory. So like I said, and like we saw when we were uh, inserting the data in the primary key, the primary keys Im uh, impact how the values are inserted and the size of the secondary index also. A non-sequential primary key can lead to many random IOPS because we were, we need, if we uh, add data always randomly and we need to move uh, other data, what happens is that more and more uh, you will see this, uh, uh, so this is a, a heat map of a one table. Uh, and you can see that every time we insert data, everything is touched almost, right? Because there is not sequential. And so uh, the InnoDB has to rebalance the clustered index, which is very bad. So this is something very bad uh, to have uh, for um, uh, IOPS and operations to do. When we use a, um, a primary key that is sequential, like uh, an auto-increment integer, then you can see that only the latest one are the one that are touched, right? So this is why it's very important for performance here to use a sequential primary key. Now you can say, yes, of course, but my legacy application didn't define any primary key. And adding an auto increment breaks the application because it was the application was not uh, expecting uh, this key there. So what can I do? Easy, just create a new invisible column and define it as a primary key. MySQL 8 allows you to do that. So this is one of these table that has no primary key, right? Where you have a name and an age. So I call the table actors. Then do we have a primary key? No. So let's find out by uh, listing all tables where are which table don't have this primary key. So we can check in information schema and we can find, oh, look, Hollywood um, actors don't uh, have any primary key defined. So this is one table that we need to fix. So. Now let's check the creation of that table. And what we can see in this table definition that indeed we haven't uh, created any primary key and there is no uh, not null unique key either, right? So now we can add that hidden column as a primary key. So what we do, we will create an ID uh, that is an integer, unsigned, auto increment. I call it primary key, invisible and first, right? So when I do like my application was just doing select star from actors, we do that and we have exactly the same output, right? 
we can check now the table definition and we can see that, oh, but there is uh, a primary key which has an invisible uh, primary key. Great, right? Uh, but if I want to insert data without specifying the column, can I do that? Of course, you can do that. You can do insert into actors value because usually it's always better and advisable to use the name of the columns when you add them. But if you don't, because your legacy application was not doing it, you can do it like exactly like this. And as you can see, it was added without any problem. But compared to the hidden, the auto-generated primary key by InnoDB, that is hidden in six byte, that where you don't have control and where it's shared with, between all the tables, here, you have control of them because if you want, you can say, oh, show me this table and show me the column and you can see it. And when replication is triggered, it uses this primary key also, right? So this primary key is sequential. It's used as a cluster index to store the data and also to externalize by replication. So if you don't have primary key, it is possible to create one uh, in MySQL 8. Secondary index is what they are. So secondary index uh, are other uh, than uh, the cluster index, but it's pointing to that uh, um, primary index, right? And it always contain that uh, primary key as the rightmost. This is why also we always advise to have a primary key very small, right? And, uh, oh, it's not such but search. And we use the, this primary key to search in the cluster index, right? So if the primary key is very long, the secondary index will also be long. So how do we create that? We can create a secondary index on the prefix of a column if we want. So for example, here I have name uh, of the city. I can say, oh, I want to index only the 10th first characters and to, uh, to also save some spa space, but it's the 10 first character are fast enough for me, even if they are, uh, instead of having one city uh, that match the, the, the name I'm looking for, even if there are three of them matching uh, the, the first 10 characters, I can then sort out out of the tree. It's not a problem, right? So uh, let's compare between the prefix uh, index and an index using the full column, right? So you can see here, if I was creating an index on the name, uh, we have the size here in bytes. And if I just use the 10 uh, first um, uh, characters, we can see that I reduce by two uh, the size of my uh, index, right? So now if I say, okay, let's, this is one of the, of the query I want to do. So I want to search uh, the name population from one city uh, and the name it San Chris, right? And there is at least two uh, rows using uh, this, um, having this name. You can see that the optimizer will go to using part of name because that index will be faster uh, to use, right? So we have the, the two uh, indexes possible, but the short one will be uh, used uh, even there are two uh, candidates, right? Now, there is something strange here is that for T, what does that 40 mean? Because I said, oh, we will uh, index only the 10 first characters, if you remember, right? So the key length column indicates the length uh, of the key that MySQL decides to use. Okay, but why 40 then? It doesn't make any sense, does it? In fact, uh, we index the first 10 characters of the name column, but this use UTF-8 MB4 char set. This is the default in MySQL 8 for storing emojis, for example. And one character, it's encoded in up to four bytes. So 10 per four bytes equal 40 bytes, which is uh, 40 uh, bytes per record in the index, right? So this is why you saw 40. Now it is also possible to index multiple columns in one uh, single index. So this is, we create an index and we can in the same index, uh, index the first name and the last name uh, column in one single index, right? So this index will work uh, on first name, last name. So if we are looking for somebody where his first name equal a 
and last name equal B, we will use that index. If we say, oh, I want to find an employee where the first name is Fred, it will use that index. But if I say, I want to find an employee where the last name equal Decan, it won't work because it always starts from the left to the right, right? So let's have a look, right? Here, I do again, uh, first name Fred, last name uh, like deck and uh, percent. We can see here, it used the key length, it's 124. And with the key uh, length, I will be able to, def to determine which part of that multi-part index it's used, right? So for that, I need to check the definition of the table. The table is first name 14, last name 16, right? So 14, it's UTF-8 and B4. So 14 uh, per four, 16 per four, multiple by four. And you see, I always use plus two, plus two. Why that plus two? Because the four, the, it's a var char and the var char's length is uh, coded in two bytes. So it gives me 124. So meaning that for that query, both part of that multiple index, so both columns were used. Now, if I say, oh, first name is Fred, only the first part is used because 14 multiplied by four plus two equal 58. So you need a bit of mathematics to be able to do that. If I do this last name, just like deck, you can see that no indexes can use that because uh, uh, the leftmost part of the index cannot be used. So the index is not used. There is one, uh, let's say, uh, exception, right? What do you think about the two statements? They are almost the same, just the second one as a ordered by. So which index will be used? None of the statement use an index. The left one will use the index or the right one will use uh, the index. In fact, it's the right one that will use the index because of the order, we will do an index scan uh, instead of a table scan to find that information. This is the only exception, right? Now, I will show you also another way to index uh, information. Uh, so we will, uh, we need to rewrite a query, right? To be able uh, to use that. But if we create a hash uh, on a, on the value of, a, if we have large string we, and we need to find the full data of the string, it's sometimes better to hash uh, that uh, value and, uh, and, uh, and index it, right? So here, for example, said hash bin names, uh, it's uh, the, the hash of uh, Amodeville because I, I will concat the first name and the last name together. And you can see that if we do that, it will use that index and the key length is shorter and it will be much faster, right? Uh, for, I just uh, forgot to skip this, um, this slide, sorry. So this is how we create that index. So we generate an index of uh, this hash bin uh, uh, name, uh, which is the concatenation of the two. It's a virtual uh, column where we uh, index it and it gives us the possibility to make it much faster. So MySQL support functional key parts that index. Uh, so these are just expression that we can use to index data using MySQL functions, right? So for example, let's have a look at this. So we want to find the first name, the IR date from an employee, uh, where the months of the IR date, it's three, March, right? So we can get the execution plan and you can see that to get that information, we need to do a full table scan, right? So we do that and we can see that he has uh, almost uh, 300,000 rows that he need to parse. It's a, it's a full table scan, what we don't like in MySQL. But we can, we can create a month higher index on the employee and here, uh, mind the uh, double uh, parenthesis, we can just create the index using the month function. And now when we do this, we will use that new index we created, which is a functional index, right? So it is very, very important, uh, nice to be able to do this uh, kind of index to in MySQL. 
something to keep in mind is that if there is a choice of multiple index, you might well will use the index that find the smallest number of rows and the most selective one, right? Of course, if the uh, MySQL, if you for joins and stuff, it will be better if you join on on uh, on uh, two tables. If you uh, uh, declare the two uh, columns you join the same type and size. When you have a null value in an index, right, it will uh, really really drive down the performance of that index. So uh, pay attention of that because it's very important. Null means there is no uh, data. It's a lack of data, so it's not true or false. It's you don't know. MySQL offers you also the possibility to hide indexes from the optimizer, and this is very useful for uh, operators uh, that uh, needs to to, to operate uh, MySQL in production, right? Uh, because before the invisible uh, index, you had okay. I think this index is not uh, useful. I will remove the index. And then somebody calls you, uh, scream on you about the slow performance. You need uh, the, to recreate that index and it can take a very long, long, long time, of course. With invisible index, you think the index is not uh, useful. You can make it invisible. So optimizer won't use it, but it will keep uh, updating it. Uh, so if somebody calls you and say, oh, there is a big uh, issue here, it's uh, slow you make the index visible again, and then you just blame a networking problem or something like that. And your DBA job, it's easy and cool, right? So invisible index are very, very useful uh, for, for this. This is all we do. Uh, we put an index invisible or visible. We can also find all the invisible index we have in the database. So something very important for the DBA, it's that, uh, unused index are expensive because every time we uh, we modify data we need to update that index so if you can get rid of the index you never use it's better to remove them and syschema uh, provide you the information uh, to find that so here you will find the size and the index that we never use we never use since the start of the, of the MySQL. So meaning that if you have restarted the MySQL recently, it's only since one or two days, not since it's working. So always be careful when, uh, rem when you remove an index, make it invisible first, wait a bit, check, and then remove it because maybe your index is used only once a month, right? And it's exactly the same for duplicate index. So sometimes you have uh, several indexes uh, the same indexes uh, or different indexes, meaning that they are indexing the same data. And this is uh, not need to, no need to, to keep them and to maintain them. So in C-Schema, you have also that information. And for example, here, you can see that uh, uh, there are uh, duplicate indexes. So uh, for example, the part of the name we did earlier and the name are two uh, um, uh, indexes that can be uh, duplicate. Of course, do not take the recommendation uh, at face value and check before uh, deleting them, uh, like I said, right? Because this is very, very important uh, to know that. So now, uh, oh, let me see here. when I remove an index, can I estimate the time left, right? So yes, it is possible. So this is a query you will copy paste and uh, this is how uh, you get uh, that information. So we can see how many percent is done, how many time it takes and stuff. I am running out of time. Uh, I am sorry, even if there is nobody after me. Uh, I want to just show you histograms in MySQL. You have also the possibility in MySQL to have histogram when you are not able to create indexes. You have two types of histogram, statement and optimizer. The optimizer histograms is the one that are important for you. Statement histograms, I let you check what it means. There is no uh, more information about that. But optimizer histogram, it's uh, when you are not able to create indexes because there is way too much value. MySQL has the possibility to create an histogram. Just wanted to show you here. 
for example, I have this query where I want uh, uh, the first name to be Crucio and the length of the movie has to be uh, less than five, 55 minutes. It will return me six rows. And this is the query execution plan of it, right? If I create uh, histograms, so this is how we create histograms. I will create 256 buckets uh, on the length, uh, on the length. And if I do that, it won't do anymore. It will just do a full uh, index scan and not the full table scan uh, anymore to find that. And you can see that the query, it's much faster now, right? Uh, MySQL allows you to find information about which table are uh, have histograms and which are these histograms and how they are uh, created and how you can find them, right? This, I will let you see uh, what, uh, just example of how to use histograms. I will let you check that uh, in the slides uh, after the talk, you can have it, but you can see that it's much more precise. And to finish, I want to see, to show you this. In the OCI, if you think your query, even if you're doing good indexes, if you are doing good histograms, it's still too slow, right? You can enable uh, an, en an analytic engines that uh, allow you to make it much faster, right? So this is a query. You can say it takes 1.2 seconds. When I enable uh, each wave, it is 10 times faster, right? So much, much faster. And for example, you can see where you have much more data, it's much more faster, right? So this is something very, very uh, nice. Uh, so I want to uh, this I want to talk about this. You will have in the slides. Just some books if you are interested. So these are uh, MySQL books that uh, are uh, new books on MySQL eight. So I really recommend you to read them. And share your love to MySQL, and I will be able to answer your question. I was a bit longer, uh, sorry, <laughs> than expected. So I will answer your question if you have questions uh, now. The slides will be available, uh, like I said, on, uh, on SlideShare soon too. Frederick, thank you so much uh, for your talk today. If anyone has any questions, we do have a few minutes um, since you're ending the, the day. It looks like uh, you're getting applause here. Um, everyone is enjoying uh, your talk. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, well, a bit sorry that uh, there are two or three slides. I was a bit fast uh, on it, but people will have the slides and uh, and they can use it as a reference, right? So this is why I wanted to to add data uh, into it. And um, it, I know you put the links to your slides at some point. I'm not sure how long it will take uh, uh, Open Source 101 to um, uh, get the get the videos. Uh, kind of segment it into their each talk and get them online, but um, eventually they'll be online and, and shared out. So I guess pay attention to um, the Open Source 101 um, website and, um, you know, to look forward to all the talks and stuff. But I will also email everybody that was on my track as soon as I know that they're out. So I'll, I'll, I'll email um, you all. But thanks again so much for being part of Open Source 101 for ending the day on such a great note. So much information. There's so much to dig into. Um, and you shared a wealth of wisdom with us today. Um, and we look forward to having you back at some point and hopefully our paths will cross and, and keep educating and imparting um, your wisdom on everyone. So thank you so much. And thank you to everyone thank you. who has attended today. And thank you for data, to Datastax for sponsoring this track today. And I hope that you all have a great day. And up next in about, I guess, 15 minutes or so will be the ending um, talk for uh, Open Source 101. So thank you so much. And pop over there and watch that ending talk. Thank you. Bye-bye.